Carnita. Este hípico y delicioso lugar, ubicado cerca de la colonia Roma Sur, se caracteriza por su deliciosa propuesta gastronómica de sabores que no se encuentran comúnmente en los restaurantes del país. Tacos como el tío, de frijol, queso y chistorra en vino blanco, el viajero, hecho de lomo y pierna de res, o sus deliciosos ceviches son algunos de los ejemplos que tiene este lugar donde los hipsters pueden permanecer horas bebiendo mezcal. Su nombre proviene de la mexicanización de la palabra partner, que significa algo así como compa. El parnita es alguien que viaja por todo el país buscando propuestas de colores, sabores para colocar en tu mesa. Así que la próxima vez que vengas a empinarte un mezcal con tus amigos hipsters, recuerda que desde 2008 hay una familia recorriendo la República Mexicana para que deleites sabores deliciosos en tu baladar en vez de solo embriagarte, cerdo borracho pretencioso. No, no mi panza me tiene confianza Trae a la esposa del chef que quiero besarla Tenedor, cuchillo, cuchara ¿Listo amigo? Esto es Ñam Ñam Extravaganza Yeah Bienvenidos a esta emisión de Ñam Ñam Extravaganza Donde todo se trata de tragar y platicar Ya conocimos un poquito sobre este hermoso y hipstercísimo lugar El Parnita Pero el día de hoy, el día de hoy tenemos un logro señores y señores Después de muchos mails, después de muchos viajes Ellos vienen aquí, son mi banda favorita eh, Son estudiantes de arte eh, Son músicos que han tocado por todo el mundo eh, ¿Qué más decirlo? Por favor, un fuerte aplauso para Yango Yango Aquí hey. están, aquí, aquí pasa Here you come, here you, here you come guys This is Vincent How you doing? How you doing Vincent? Hey Richard, cheers Tommy hey. How you doing? And... Hey. So, uh, you ready? Uh, the yep. owner, the, you do some some scalp. You want to drink it or you you drink after the show? Right? Maybe after, after the show. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we could put like some dummy shots. In, like, <laughs> and just, you know. Put water on it and yeah, take yeah, it for yeah, a camera. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Dude, are you are you uh, really obsessive uh, before going on stage? With it, like uh, we can drink. It has to be ready. Yeah. Or is it like yeah, let's be ready? Yeah. Uh, yeah. When I when I drink before the show, my sense of pitch. So, so yeah, I'll just be like in a totally different key. So yeah, I, t I tend to kind of stay I like sober to maybe halfway through the set and then I'll have a, like a, a beer or something. I'll have one drink before the show. If I have two drinks, I think these guys notice. If you have three drinks, I think the audience notices. <laughs> Yeah. You had that experience before? We're like, yeah. oh, let's not drink again. Let's yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I learned really early on I can't drink a drum because I'm playing to a click track. So, yeah, it's just that bad. And my hair just gets bigger and bigger the more I drink. It's just like at the end, it's like a fluff ball. So, I wait till after. I'm going to start by, by saying how, how important is this interview for me because I've been chasing you guys. Yeah. I've been chasing you for years. You don't know, but I met you guys in Coachella. Yeah. We met at, at Lollapalooza. Oh, uh, yeah. Hold on a second. You signed this. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love Mexico. You, yeah. you, you haven't been here. Yeah. <laughs> I love Mexico. Yeah, exactly. You like the idea. That was the first time that I saw you uh, performing live, and it blew my brains out. So I traveled to San Francisco to see you again. Yeah, yeah. And it blew my brains uh, <laughs> even more. And then you then you hold it for a new album, and you you did a show in London. With yeah, the new album right, yeah. with Marble Skies. So yeah, I, I traveled to London to see you uh, uh, perform there because I, oh, I think no, it's yeah. really important to see the band Great. where they belong. Yeah. And since then, I've been looking for this interview. Yeah. yeah. You guys wrote back like, oh, so sorry, it couldn't be ha uh, possible, yeah. but we're gonna be at Coachella. And I told myself, all right, let's, let's go to Coachella. Yeah. And that was it. That was yeah. the fall. That was yeah. the. <laughs> <laughs> you told me like we have one hour. Yeah. We have to meet each other at 1:30. But I was in the middle of nothing. It was cold. Like, did yeah. you figure how far it was from Coachella that yeah. it was cold during the day? <laughs> yeah. So I went to a coffee shop and I told him, like, uh, can, can you ask me for a cab? And the guy told me, like, wait, a cab? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> so at some point, I know it had to be an hour away. Oh, we're here. Then yeah. I watched yeah, you live. It was an amazing yeah. moment. And you wrote me like, all right, we can meet each other for a few yeah. seconds. And I run over you and the flashable zombies yeah. were playing like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right next to them, they're like, how are you guys? Nice to meet you. Sorry, I couldn't make the interview. I was in the middle of fucking nowhere. <laughs> but then I had time to, to ask you one thing about festivals. And I was so mad at Coachella that he was like, full of useless hipsters, EDM <laughs> dancers. And I asked Tommy like, yeah. what do you think of this festival? It, it has changed a lot. It made me laugh so hard. He told me, oh, I think it's great. It's the first time I've, I've played here. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was full of sand. How's the experience to, to be part of those festivals? With Lollapalooza where I saw you or, or Coachella. Lollapalooza is cool. You, good, you've yeah. got like Chicago skyline behind you. And we played, I think it was like us, 
Team Impala and then Metallica. So we had a sea of Metallica fans <laughs> all kind of like just staring at us. So we had to kind of try to break them down. And then Coachella, you know, it's a pretty legendary thing. It's amazing to be asked, invited to come and play. What's the good thing about festivals and what's the bad thing about festivals? It's just different, you know, you don't have your partisan crowd there. You see faces in the audience that are a bit like, okay you know trying to understand it maybe for, for, for the first time or maybe like as Vinny says the front row is waiting for the next band i think so, we're tomorrow i think we're clashing with cypress hill oh so that's difficult <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Be a difficult yeah. one, let's order some food okay yeah oh, oh your, your, your menu is not in english right so you, yeah. um, you got, do you want to order a food yeah Ah, uh, new order. Okay. Traeme por favor unos eh, taco viajero, que es it's made of pork. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Tres tacos you, you viajeros, dos tíos, en, en tierra de sol. Oh, this is a, you like portobello? And mushrooms, yeah. Mushrooms, yeah. 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 Right, uh, cuatro tierras del sol. Do you like ceviche? Chopped fish. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What have we got? The... Uh, this is really spicy. Yeah. This is spicy also. This yeah. is uh, like kind of, but, but okay. be careful. Okay. So how did you went to uh, meeting each other on art school and getting to do this like punky sound with techno? How did you get to that? I had a Casio keyboard that had a, a drum machine on it and um, me and Vinny went to a rehearsal room in London and um, I just pressed play on this Casio keyboard and put it through an amplifier and Vinny played and that became the song uh, Storm from the first album. That was the very first song we did. How, how do you get with the idea of making those uh, like double choruses? I would suppose it was like our style of singing. It lends itself to that kind of like double harmonies or triple harmonies. It kind of sounded more like more full. Yeah, it was just a bit of a, we were just figuring stuff out really. So yeah, that was kind of the, the starting point really. Cheers. 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 2009, you formed the band, and three years later, uh, you're nominated to a Mercury Prize. Like, how, how did that feel? It's quite incredible. Like, <laughs> I think we were totally caught unawares, really. When we put out the first album, you know, the reviews started coming out like the week before the release. And they were, they were good, you know, they were good reviews and we were like, all oh, right. Because you just don't know, you don't, like, it's like writing a book or something, you just don't know if you're totally mad. It was just a surprise for us as it was for our, our friends and stuff. It's exciting. Suddenly you were at Glastonbury. Django, Django, people. Playing with Jules Holland also. Yeah. What, what was going through your mind? You were thinking like, what the f what am I doing here? <laughs> or you were on the line like, yeah, I totally deserved it. Well, there was three years of us playing some pretty crummy shows and it, it was just always gradual and building up until we got that Mercury thing. I guess we kind of put out, like we put a couple of singles out before the album. So like, I guess usually when a band do that, you know, press would expect an album to, to drop three months later, but we literally had like five songs. Now, I guess a lot of bands would just write a full album first and, and then release it. I think for a band that has been working for three years, an album that sounds like that is just, just amazing. Yeah. There's like a, oh, here it is. You thanked all these bands. All these are bands, too. The Kennedys. Why did you decide to make this uh, huge list of bands uh, of, of thanking them? Like, uh, uh, for me personally, I felt like it was like a, a lifetime of musical influence and record collecting and felt like it would come a long way from, you know, playing music in our bedrooms and finally getting a record out. felt like we owed a debt of gratitude to all this music we'd been into all through our teens and our 20s that got us, you know, listening to all those records, inspired us to, to make our own records. We had a lot of family and friends who'd like helped us with stuff and I forgot to put my brother-in-law <laughs> he'd, 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 he'd given us his van, it was like a Chevy van to drive around with for like two years and I forgot to put him on the list. You should look down the camera now and give him an emotional... Yeah. Fergus, this is for you. <laughs> it's all because of you. To Fergus. To Fergus. Okay. 
Uh, after all the success about uh, because of the first album, you guys were invited to two video games. Uh, your music was uh, video games, yeah, GTA yeah. and yeah, in FIFA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How does it feel as an art rock band suddenly be on GTA, a rockstar game, or in FIFA? And, and, and how's the process? Did you receive a call? You just get an email. Just get an email. Uh, email. I think a kind of like Willy well, Wonka like invitation. <laughs> you know. How are art school is involved in your video? In your beat? In your beat is an awesome video. It's all animated. And yeah. who does that? Who, who, who comes up with that idea? Uh, that one I came up with the idea, but I, it was a, it was um, an animator, this girl called Sophie, who took it on and just. Like took it beyond our expectations. The animator who did the swimming at night video. Again, came from us, you know, the idea. But we're just lucky that we get to work with really good teams, you know, animators and people that can take a brief and just, you know, kind of take it in a, in a whole new direction. Were you guys were involved on the noisy war video? It had nothing to do. Uh, yeah, it was Billy's you. idea. It was your idea. I you did, went there. I, I went in. And I, what the uh, hell you were doing there? How did you how did you come up to that fair? It, I went. I went. It's amazing. So basically, it's a kind of wheel uh, circle of death where cars and motorbikes go around like on the side and you basically put out like money and these guys on motorbikes come past and take it out of your arm but one caught my hand and slammed it into this bar <laughs> nearly like broke it backwards and then we had to come up with a like a video idea and I was like that track and that visual would look really cool to go on. And then we got like noisy to go over and they, I think they had difficulty finding, tracking them down because they don't really have a website about where they go. They just kind of go, they just go where they think, you know, they wake up like two days, then we'll move there. So they couldn't really track them down. So we had a scout try and kind of track them down and meet up with them. They're real real stars. Oh yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> they're, I, mean they're I don't know what the mortality rate is, but I can't <laughs> imagine it's very, it's very high. They get out of the car window and then they steer it with their feet and they're just like kind of doing this. You know, just waving at people, going around this <laughs> circle. Jim can run around it. <laughs> <laughs> Vincent said you just rest for a week and then you start to work again. I saw once uh, the Pitch Mode tour. It was like a two-year tour, like man, all these cities. And all I think is like, yeah, of course, these guys have a private jet. They get to the best hotels and they're the Pitch Mode and just, they just go like, yeah, of course I can do a world tour. How do you manage to be doing a world tour not having this private jet that the Pitch Mode has? Being a, a, like an indie band, is life, it hard life. to tour like that? No, you don't think about it, you just do it, right? I mean, you probably don't think, oh, damn, another air airport, you just do it. Speaking about private jets, we don't even have private hotel rooms. Right? <laughs> yeah. we, everywhere we go, we just share rooms, share beds. There's this guy who's drummer of a Mexican band, and he told me once that, man, I hate to share a room with this guy because he's always naked. You experience something like that? That's why Benny enjoys sharing a room with yeah. Tommy. He's always that's naked, he's amazing. Like, that's <laughs> what well, you guys have a concert. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You have to do the, uh, the sound check now. Yeah. Can I join you? Yeah. For real? For real? This is getting better, man. This is getting better. All right, let's go to the to, to Plaza Condesa. Go ahead and take the account, please. This is a dream of reality. Aquí en el escenario donde va a tocar Yango Yango en la noche, despedimos esta misión de Ñano Extravaganza. No olviden you suscribirse. Come, uh, you should have came and played with us. We should have done that. That would have been perfect. Uh, you guys are going to rock the Mexican audience. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your no, time. Thank you. Yeah. All right, cool. You guys are awesome. You Thanks. Are really I appreciate awesome. that. Thanks. Cheers. Right. Cheers. Thanks Thank you. Again. Have a great yes. show. Right. Thank you. Cheers. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. 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 See you after for beer. Uh, aquí termina esta edición de Ñamiado Extravaganza. Voy a mi casa a procesar todo. Con permiso. 